Plug in all your Pokemon. Uh, Sludge Wave or Earthquake? Uh, earthquake. It's literally the team that you uh, made on the stream. Oh my god. Yeah, I like practice golf. I did not even try. I was like, you know what? Let me put his team together and just go in. We'll see. Yeah, this month is like kind of busy for me, so like I just took whatever you gave me and <laughs> rolling with it. That's not bad. Four one. Right yeah. off the bat. Uh, what was that? I think called Burmadam. Iron Head. Uh, seems correct. I had Skull Bash on, right? Yeah, yeah, Skullbash. Uh, Skull I assume since it was an early one, you didn't really have a choice to use Shadow Bone? Yeah, it was Shadow Ball. Yeah. Okay. Marsh, great team. Alright, do a quick check of the uh, of the screen, see if everything's correct. That was your first opponent, right? X Factor? Yeah, yeah. All right. What's up, Jack Fuzz? Welcome to the stream. Alexito, hey. Give it like um i guess two more minutes two three four more minutes we'll start looking over the team sounds um, good <laughs> alex you don't know you weren't first you were second <laughs> <laughs> so uh i have shinigami over in voice call right now um i'm gonna try to keep my unnecessary comments to a minimum today because i am a little sick um if the team on screen looks familiar to any of you it's the team that I built on stream for my team building Marsh Cup stream and he has decided to use it for his practice cup and that is what we are working with today. Um, so a lot of the weaknesses with this team are you will notice that they are very bait dependent weaknesses and a lot of the weaknesses that I did identify in the previous stream I essentially said there's still plenty of win conditions even though Marowak for example um, wins against four of our Pokemon right so Lapras I don't know why it says it loses uh, oh it's because it has Shadow Bone um, but it's also going to be IV dependent and it's bait dependent because a Alolan Marowak cannot go straight Shadow Bone I'm correct. I am correct. My Lapras is like rank 5, I think. Oh, so then that, that's good. even better. Uh, yeah. So you see in this matchup, um, the Marowak ends up with 30 energy at the very end. So the only way Marowak wins this matchup is if it baits here and then baits at the end right here, as, or, or deals the extra little bit of damage at the end as well. So it is a bait dependent matchup and IV dependent, I believe. With the really good IVs, even with the bait, you don't knock out. Yeah, so right there we have it. Uh, Lapras, Marowak, depending on IVs, depending on baits, it could flip, but it's still in Lapras's favor. Sup, Country Nerd? Um, and then we have the Cradley weakness. Lapras, there's a win condition. The Cradley needs to know to throw the Stone Edge rather than the Grass Knot. Um... Same thing with the Alolan Marowak, it's going to be moveset, it's going to be IV, and it's going to be bait dependent on both sides. Uh, Galvantula into two shields can win greatly because Lunge is just so powerful. Uh, you reduce the damage enough so that you survive a Stone Edge. Um, and then Venusaur dealing neutral damage to Cradley, Cradley dealing resisted bullet seeds. Uh, so that's your main counter. Hey Francis, welcome to the stream. Uh, for those who are just finally making it to the stream, I'm going over the team. Uh, we have Shinigami over voice chat. Um, and the team he has decided to use for his practice cup is the team that I picked 
or I built on stream uh, for the Marsh team building stream that I do every month, which will probably happen again in two weeks or so uh, for yeah. the next couple. Right. Uh, so yeah, that'll be interesting to see again. Uh, provide some self content every once in a while. So overall, those are the main weaknesses. A little muck. It really has tight matchups against most things, so you can never say Alola Muck is a super strong counter against anything or a super weak counter against anything. For the Alolan Muck versus Galvantula matchup, it relies on the Alolan Muck landing a Sludge Wave. Yeah, I also found the Shadow Shift Tree was kind of hard to deal with. Shadow um, Shift Tree, interesting. Yeah. Oh, Shadow Shift yeah. wins against uh, Galvantula. That, that's Galvantula, why. that's that's why it was harder for me to deal with it. Like, even though, like, I like in one of the rounds, I called the lead and everything, I was like, oof, this dude is just too strong. Shadow Shift is pretty broken. Hey, Alexito, thank you for the sub. Thank you so much for two months. Uh, let's see, Country Nerd says, A friend started using Crossa today, and it gave me some problems in practice besides getting Swamp locked against it. Thoughts on Rocky Crab? So... Remember when I started looking at the cup, I described it as a Halloween cup with water types. Um, you just deal with it the same way. You can deal with it with water types. You can deal with it um, with grass types. And I believe there is one fighting type in this cup, but the, uh, or one or two fighting types, but you don't want to use those. You just use water types instead of that. So... Um, you're, you're just going to have to rely on... Uh, and if you're looking at this team in particular, there's there's wind conditions everywhere. Swampert is a strong wind condition. Let's see if it's even here. Um, meta score card. Where? What's that thing called again? Crystal. Crystal? Yeah, it actually loses to four out of the six. Like, even Vormadam, it actually kind of loses I if you shield properly. I don't think they even have Crustle on the meta scorecard. Yeah, oh. Crustle. Crustle is probably like. Uh, yeah, Crustle's not even on the meta scorecard for, for some reason. Uh, apparently, it's not meta enough. Um, but I, I have seen people talk about it. It is a strong candidate. Like, it does what Lone Marowak can, but in a different sense like where it beats a and marowak but has a new weaknesses you know um but the main role for it is to be an anti-buck um the the biggest weakness that it gains is against the ferrothorn which is the rank number two pokemon in the marsh cup uh but in terms of this team how we would deal with it is venusaur is a great uh great counter to it it deals neutral damage and outpaces uh, Crustle because of the Frenzy Plant, Swampert dealing super effective water, Galvantula can chunk at it, so if you have some kind of energy lead, two discharges or two lunges will be able to knock it out. Alolan Marowak can land a Shadow Ball and knock it out if that is uh, something you manage to pull off. Uh, and Lapras technically loses to it, but if you have any type of energy lead, Lapras can easily surf and win. Wormadam versus Cresso, very close matchup as well. Uh, it's going to come down to IVs and come down to Shield Scenarios as well. So Cresso is kind of like in that same position where Alolan uh, Muck gets close to a lot of opponents, but doesn't necessarily win a lot either. Um, it's it's about more about understanding your Shield Scenarios and energy differences, which can help you win matchups where you don't expect to win or don't expect to lose if you end up losing um so it's one of those more um strategy based pokemon um yeah so so we've got around 15 20 people in here so uh we've just looked over the team once again i'll say uh thank you shinigami for sending me your clips early clips so we could go over a marsh cup tournament review on stream um, this will be around a, an hour and a half to two hours. We have five rounds for you all. Um, and yeah, if if you uh, have shown up for the previous team building stream, this is the team he used. 
Um, I have other teams I've built off stream, but um, always welcome to share those if people are interested. And let's hop into the um, the battles, I guess. So round number one, we have Shinigami against X Factor, which you will see on the. All right, let me get my tabs sorted out correctly. Um, Okay, uh, we have X Factor on the bottom left. We have X Factor's team on the bottom left, and then we have uh, Shinigami's team on the top left. And then we will head into the very first battle as you are picking your team. I'm gonna quickly go over what he has. X Factor has a Politoed, which is very interesting. Cloyster also very interesting. Um, Jumpluff not the most ideal Pokemon in my opinion because it is still one of those Pokemon that still loses to Galvantula even with a Kind of a neutral uh, kind of matchup and you would think its bulk would actually let it edge out but the issue is that aerial ace is such a bad move and lunge is such a powerful move so jump bluff doesn't really pick up that matchup Golbat doesn't pick up that matchup either so a lot of x factor's weaknesses will be that galvantula as long as you keep it away from that crustle should be perfectly fine bring that pokemon in So as Swampert, you are taking neutral damage because of your ground typing. Um, Politoed is not a mud boy, it's pure water, so it's going to come down to the baits on the side of Swampert, but these earthquakes will hit a lot harder than the surfs coming the other way will. So it is a bait dependent matchup. So far, it's working out all right. You're able to get to the next one if necessary. I do like that go. So we do see the Galvantula being picked and coming into counter farm. Uh, deciding to go for the shield, ad, um, the shield advantage over the switch advantage is actually a really smart thing to do, especially since you have something like a Galvantula. Um, I would actually double shield because you have not placed a debuff on this and it would actually get to another surf anyways. So you have two choices. Uh, you go down. You're already down to shield. Um, well, no, you're you're, you're even shields. Uh, even shields, yeah. But coming into the next matchup, you have two choices. One would be insane energy advantage, and the mm -hmm. other would be um, just a little bit of energy advantage. Um, but the first one comes at the cost of uh, what do you call it? Comes at the cost of a shield, right? Um, yeah. So the only thing you're worried about realistically is the Crustle coming in. If you do have a, um, if you do, whether you have shields or not, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah. It All that damage will come from those Smackdowns. No, it does. So in that scenario, your Galvantula really doesn't need shields. Um, because when you look at all other opposing uh, uh, Pokemon that he may have, you can, even with the Crustle, you can double discharge, double lunge, and beat that Pokemon and pull that last shield. And then you look at the remaining Pokemon again, Lapras versus the rest of their Pokemon, which is a very good line. You you have a very good line. You know exactly what your opponent's weak against. If you pull that second shield, yeah, come back in with Lapras, farm, whatever, and then Skullbash the Cloyster, uh, Surf the Crosso, Surf the Sableye twice, I shard the Jump Bluff, I shard the Golbat. However you played out, it's in favor of you. Yeah. So, deciding to go for... Uh, one of the basic... I guess the basic rule of thumb is place your shield where it res uh, soaks up the most damage, right? Yeah. Lapras is a tank. Galvantula is glassy as heck. Mm-hmm. <laughs> No matter how you play this out, the only thing that will take the most damage is Galvantula. And the only thing yeah. that can beat both of those Pokemon is Crusso. And that damage is coming from fast moves anyways, right? Yeah. So protect the Pokemon that needs to be protected, and that would be Galvantula. 
And Galvantula has this thing where it has this really good carryover effect where mm -hmm. you can debuff the next Pokemon, where you can uh, pull shields much harder if, like, with a shield advantage on Galvantula rather than a shield advantage on. Um, I mean, an energy advantage on Galvantula rather than an energy advantage on something like Wormadam, for example. Um, because you are so glassy, you're going to be dealing more damage. So, understanding where to place your shields and where to pull shields back, that's the yeah. most important thing. You can always pull shields back. Don't be afraid to spend shields if you know that you can pull shields back. And in that scenario, uh, by shielding your uh, Galvantula, and just going for the full farm, knowing that their mud shots are not stab, their mud shots mm -hmm. don't deal very much damage to begin with. They are a water yeah. type, not a bud boy. You can farm to completion, end out with a hundred energy. You still make it out with like 50 60 percent, even after yeah. getting hit by a handful of mud shots. Um, so it is glassy, it'll take damage from mud shots, but getting out of that matchup, zero shields to one, you can pull shields back. So don't be afraid mm -hmm. to spend those shields. So in this matchup, yes. you have a good save swap. Um, it actually has really good matchups against everything on their team except for uh, Sableye. So mm -hmm. um, X-Factor's unfortunately faced against a team that has very, very good picks against his team. Yeah. I think this was also really early, so nobody really has a really solid team yet. Yeah. Um, everybody was like, uh, they were just like practicing out and like, and I, I, I would see teams comps like, which were like completely random. So everybody was just trying out whatever they wanted to. Uh, and uh, this team like actually caught my attention because like I was not expecting, uh, I was not expecting Sableye for the first time. Like I was like, okay, I don't think like Sableye has that much play. But uh, yeah, against my team, like Sableye only is like warmer dance, like best counter, and like uh, a little Marowak yeah. completely blocks off. So I see you try to go for the undercharge. Um, yeah. So the issue with one undercharging there is if your opponent switch timer is up. Yeah. It's not the most. Um, useful thing and here mm -hmm. you're going for the earthquake which is actually brilliant uh knowing yeah. that if he goes for the foul play uh you're gonna die anyways so going yep. for as much damage as possible perfect so these games are actually played pretty darn well um just needs a little bit of kind of uh experience which is what these practice cups are for but yeah yeah, you're, you're doing great so far. Uh, I'm going to quickly answer uh, Alexito's question. Do you really prefer Thunder over Flash Cannon on Feral? So with Ferrothorn, it depends on your team. It depends on the coverage you need. Personally, I prefer Flash Cannon uh, because it's just a better move. Um, and it's something you can use to nuke something. Uh, Power Whip is a really good move, but when you compare Power Whip with Thunder and you go for like the one final last ditch effort to burn as many uh, as much energy to deal as much damage as possible, Thunder won't do that for you. Flash Cannon on the other hand, even though it got nerfed, it's still a decent move. So uh, if I compare... Oh, well, I, guess, I guess if I throw um, Ferrothorn against Galvantula right here look at all the damage if i throw a power whip against galvantula 51 damage thunder actually does less for 10 more energy and if i throw a flash cannon it'll deal 11 more damage for 20 more energy so it's not dpe wise it's not better but if that's if that extra 10 damage is what you need to knock out opponent then that's what really matters um there are scenarios where flash cannon will be more useful for example against um against something like Alolan Muck, uh, against Frostlass, against um, Shift Tree. So these are all things, uh, but the most important thing with Flash Cannon is it'll give you an edge against the grass types. And if your team is lacking a grass type counter, then that's the way to go. If you want some more coverage against, for example, Alolan Marowak, if you want more coverage against 
flying types, for example, Pelipper, Dugong, um, then that's the way to go. Or not Dugong, because it's weak to grass anyways. So, so it, it really depends on what your team needs. But I personally, for the teams that I built, Flash Cannon is slightly more favorable in those situations. So I see the Galvantula versus Cloyster. Um, so right here, you've you pretty much um, you're you're so behind on energy that you have two choices: you either let this Galvantula drop, or mm -hmm. you just commit to farming down, which you probably can't do because oh, that's a very interesting play. Was yeah. not expecting the second shield on that cloister. Oh, that was interesting. Um, I think like what my opponent thought there was like that I stayed in with Swampert for so long that Cloyster has play in the back. But uh, I just stayed in because like I had play against Crystal in the back with Wormerdan. So with with your shield, what I'm thinking yeah. is you spent a shield on Galvantula, and you know Galvantula is so squish, squishy. <laughs> With that big of an energy lead, you know there's no way you're going to come out of that matchup ahead, right? Yeah. So either you swap into Wormadam to begin with, or <laughs> you let him burn all his energy on the Wormadam, and then you come in with... I mean, uh, let him burn all his energy on the Galvantula, and then the farm down with Wormadam. So the only scenario where you would actually want to shield that Galvantula in mm -hmm. that type of scenario is if you cannot farm it down with a different Pokemon. For example, if Swampert was your only choice, and you yeah. you can't farm down a Cloyster with a Swampert, right? Mm -hmm. But with something like a, um, a Wormadam resisting the ice types, uh, yeah. damage, chunking damage with uh, Confusion, that's something you can do. And since you're already uh, ahead on shields, um, and the only way you come out of that matchup ahead, which you don't need to, right? Because you have yeah, yeah. good Pokemon against their lead. Switch advantage mm -hmm. doesn't matter to you because however you play it, you're yeah. still at an advantage. So it's... Yeah. Because like that match, uh, Galvantula loses completely to Crystal, so I could have just like let Galvantula completely go. Yeah. And uh, he would have used both the Icy Winds on him. Yeah. So that's, the one thing one. you could have used Galvantula for was insta-swapping right as they'd swap uh -huh. to the Cloyster, but you already gave up that opportunity, right? At yeah, that point, yeah. uh, Galvantula is only going to be good, uh, is going only going to be paired back into something that's unfavorable. Yeah. Because if you swap it into the Cloyster at that point, then that's unfavorable because of the energy advantage, a uh, disadvantage. If you swap it into uh, Crustle, there's that type disadvantage. If you swap it into any, any of the other Pokemon, uh, you're probably going to be at a shield disadvantage at that point as well. So your your Galvantula is completely expendable at that point. And if you had realized that, you would have said, sure, spend all your energy on me right now. I'll just farm down. I'll not only have shield advantage, I'll have energy advantage as well. Yep. And you can take the Pokemon advantage because your Pokemon, no matter if you have two Crustles, three Crustles, I'm still at a at a type advantage, right? Yep. So yep. being able to identify is something that I'm 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 learning to be able to kind of coach people better on is being able to uh, guide players through what type of advantage they should be thinking about, uh, rather than just describing my thought process and. By, by constantly reiterating that there's three main types of advantages, these are things that you can uh, easily constantly ask yourself and question yourself, which advantage am I trying to play into? Which advantage should I be uh, looking out for? And I'll say again, uh, the first advantage would be switch advantage. Mm -hmm. What you can call it a Pokemon advantage, type advantage, however you want. It doesn't have to be a switch scenario. Switch yeah. advantage means your Pokemon's just better than theirs. You will win with switch advantage, or you will, or you force them to swap, and you you will regain switch advantage. However you play it out, I call that switch advantage. It's just a broad term for Pokemon advantage or, or type advantage, something like that. The second type of advantage will be H. Uh, um, no, no, actually, the first HP advantage kind of falls into the first one. Because that means mm -hmm. you're probably going to win that matchup. It's, it's just a matchup advantage, I guess, would be a better way to yeah. call it. But 
switch advantage just more straight easier to say uh, the second one would be shield advantage very straightforward the more shields you have and if it's a charge move dependent matchup the more likely you are to win third yeah. one would be energy advantage with an energy advantage if it's again if it's a charge move dependent matchup then with the energy advantage you're able to get to that what third fourth charge move faster you can win that so any of the three advantages um is usually a way to kind of regain any type of ground in a game mm -hmm. that you might be losing yeah all right i'm gonna let my throat rest for a bit let's just hop in the second uh second round change these up i might have to start whispering at this point all right let me click this so the second opponent is dre flames Looking at his team was where I realized, oh, Shadow Shifty might be actually kind of hard to deal with. Um, but uh, I still like win one match where he brings Shadow Shifty. It's just I manage energy pretty well in that so match. Actually. Shadow Shifty, right. the best way to deal with it is actually with Alolan Marowak. Mm -hmm. You just play into the zero shield or you play into the two shield. You play into yeah. matchups that you know you will win. Um, with Lapras, same thing. I shard thing, yeah. down a shift tree. You survive a leaf blade. Mm -hmm. Find as many win conditions as you can. Stick to those yep. Pokemon. Don't bring Wormadam. Yeah, don't bring, definitely not. Don't bring Swampert. Bring everything yeah. else that you know can answer it. And then build a team yep. around that. So Lapras is very good against this opposing team. Deals with Swampert. Can deal with Gengar. Mm -hmm. can chip away at golf um and then alola marowak being very core and galvantula being the counter you're going to need for lapras or fortress yeah and this is bait dependent too yeah they it is kind of foul play so uh, yeah i just let it go there um yeah, this was the first where like I was like, what can I do here? So I decided like that he's gonna lead shift tree, which I caught with Calvantula. But uh, I've like heard everywhere that like no matter even if you double shield you lose against shift tree, uh shadow. So I just kind of saved the energy and just went into this. Um because even if he dumps like I think like at that point I was like Lapras can do a lot of work in the back. Uh, when Shifri is gone, so that's why I just switched in uh, Wormadam to like Sulk, but he smart will like he was smart enough to like okay. not throw on him. Let me show you so. something real quick. Yeah. So did one shield. Um. For some reason, oh wait, no shadow, right? Yeah. So, you see how you lose one and two shield scenario? Mm -hmm. I'm going to pause the uh, playback real quick. Okay. You lose zero. Uh, you lose the zero, one and two. Yeah. You win the one. Stick mm -hmm. to that. There's no reason for you to ever shield, right? Because yeah, yeah. no matter how you play it out, you're going to lose. You're going to lose, yep. So stick to the one shield. They yeah, take a shield. They can foul play if they yeah. want, because you survive it. So they spend one shield. Uh, no, wait, no, that's the other way around. Uh, they spend the shield on this lunge right here. They throw foul play. You survive. Uh, they still have to. They might throw depending on how close you are to the lunge, but they probably don't. Yeah, most likely. Won't. Snarl you down. That's fine. Yeah. But at this point, you have two shields to one. Mm -hmm. And be. And they're debuffed as well, right? So, yep. what happens Bringing next? Lapras. With, yes. Lapras. With yep. your line, 
you come in yeah. with Lapras because that's mm -hmm. the only choice you have. So the exact yeah. same thing would have happened, except you would be would a shield ahead. Up a shield, yeah. So let me yep. close this. Um, wait, hold on. Let me refix this. Two shields. Two, one. And then should be debuffed here. Yep. Uh, so you will only be shielding once. You can take one leaf blade. Yep. You farm down. You have 50 energy going into that final matchup. And sure, this means you have one and a half Pokemon with half energy on one versus two Pokemon. But this is a much better scenario than the scenario yeah. you initially played out. Because you essentially Cause... lost an entire Pokemon, you lost both your shields, mm -hmm. and then now you're switching out trying to catch a third charge move, which is putting you in a deeper hole. Yep. So... If there's a very straightforward win condition and a very mm -hmm. straightforward lose condition for the switch, don't play yeah. into it. Stick to the one that you know will happen. Stick to the zero shield galve because after that one shield has been expended, you lose anyways. Give it up. Yeah. Yep. You need to look for that advantage somewhere else. And the only advantage you can regain right now is energy advantage because you know you can farm down with ice shards. Yep. You've given up shield yeah. in the first matchup. You've given up Pokemon or Switch as well. Don't give up energy and shields. You know, like you you gotta find mm -hmm. some some way back. So yeah, uh, and and especially Lapras has a very good move set. In the entire Marsh Cup, I believe there's only two things that resist everything it has: Ferrothorn being the first Pokemon. Um, and then I don't remember what uh, Empoleon being the second so your opponent has neither of those Pokemon which means mm. Lapras can deal unresisted damage to a lot of things yep. so Lapras with energy will be able to pull back at least the shield or some type of advantage and you need to stick to that look at the advantages don't give up more than one if you don't need to so let's continue on with this matchup he comes back in with this leaf blade that you were going to take anyways so he would have come in with the fortress after you farm down this um uh, uh shift tree you would have been able to get two off he has to throw a charge move to knock out lapras and if it's mm -hmm. a mirror shot, he's going to have to throw it too. So you're yeah. able to get the three surfs easy in that matchup. Which means you have Wormadam against Swampert. Which is also a very playable matchup. In the zero shields, Bug Buzz, it's gone. Right? Yep. So how it plays out in the back is very dependent on what your opponent may have. On what they might bring. And that's that's questionable. And that that's, you know, that's a guessing game. And that's based on luck. And that's based on strat. Or like... You know, like you, you can't account for that. But what you can account for is what you saw in the lead and what you have right in front of you. And you need to stick to that. Being able to identify, I lost the lead. How do I bring this back? Yeah. I don't need this Galvantula anymore. Just like the other matchup. Cloister, a Galvantula into Cloister. I don't need this Galvantula anymore, right? Get rid of it. Yeah. Find yeah. a way back. Pull shield scenario. Pull a, uh, uh, pull a shield to advantage. Or pull a... Um, what do you call it? Uh, energy advantage somehow. Mm -hmm. So, so this, this match, I this is probably could have won. Um, if I shielded right here, I could have won. <laughs> oh yeah. But, oh oh yeah. That, yeah. That is. But yeah, that was the uh, that was the play that lost me this game. I, could have I won this probably one. <laughs> would have no shielded that, to be honest, as well. Yeah. <laughs> Was not expecting the Skull Bash. Because then I would have had Switch, and Switch was really important. I really thought like he was going to double surf, but he actually went for 
That that's so, just a really good play on the opponent's end. Yeah. And then I assume they have um what do you call it? Shift tree in the back. Um they actually did not bring shift tree in this one. Oh, but they had something that completely over. was. <laughs> yeah. So this was over at this one, so I was like, okay, yeah. this is whatever. <laughs> Well, this matchup was entirely based on regaining that switch Winning advantage. Winning the switch, yep. Um, another thing I could have done is like just stayed in with Venusaur and taken both the shields. Then uh, Swampert in the back actually can deal with both the Pokemons. But uh, I did not know. Like, I was actually hoping that like he had Shifter in the back. And that was the <laughs> play I was trying to make. Mirror shot. Oh man, that was close. Yeah. That is super close. Literally, I think one fire spin away or something like that was I could have won. <laughs> or two, yeah. This one goes in and another one would have won me. But yeah, it was just based on Switch. But yeah, it was, this was a fun, like a really close one. Uh, and he brought it back from losing a lead. So that was pretty hands up on him. So, I probably would have played it out the exact same way you would have if this was uh, the, the line that I ran. So the only yeah. thing I can think of right now is, would that actually be the line I would bring? And um, let's look back at the Pokemon um, you brought in that matchup. So you went for Venusaur, so we... Alolan Marowak, and Swampert. Um <laughs> What they went for the first time was shift tree, shift tree. Uh, swamper and fortress so yeah. alolan marowak would be a good pick galvantula not so much maybe uh, wormadam uh, not so much either <laughs> Venusaur would be okay um not bad and yeah. then what was the third one you picked swamper i was either between lapras or swamper like you can see me like doing like clicking between those two which one do i want to go with so yeah uh, that that's where yeah. i would have gone with a lapras lapras um, because right because if yeah. you look at the swamper versus shift tree matchup that's terrible right that's terrible and yeah. then you have the, because that's what gave you problems in the first place right you don't mm -hmm. want to increase those issues. You don't want to make yeah. it a whole larger for yourself. Um, and then you have the Swampert mirror match. If you yeah. don't want to play that out if you don't have to, because that's yeah. bit dependent. That's plus on on top of that. Like uh, if I had Lapras there, I would have brought Lapras into Lapras, and after like even though like getting the shield. Uh, once I got the shield with Frenzy Plan, like yeah. Lapras into Lapras with shields up, like I could have won that. Back. Yeah, easily. So, yeah. Yeah, that could have been Lapras there, yep. So that's that's a matter of picking up the right line after the first matchup. Mm -hmm. um, so, up in the third match. So you're bringing Wormadam. Um, not... So you're bringing a team that's very, very weak to shift tree. Sure, he didn't bring it the second time. Yeah. Um, but that, that's probably a mind game. Um, yeah. <laughs> completely expecting him to bring it this time. Oh, this is actually a very good lead, actually. Yep. Uh, Shifter comes in. He goes into Shifter. Yeah, yeah, and then now you have no counter swap. Yeah, I do. So you're pretty much boned here. Yeah. <laughs> I take this, I think, and then I switch. I'm not too sure. Or actually, I take the shield as well back. Okay. So remember, this is a shadow shift tree. You don't mm -hmm. have to go for the bug buzz. Any type of charge move would chunk this thing, knock it out. Yeah. I actually was thinking, like, maybe it'll be defense drop. And then uh, uh, these uh, wall switches probably will do more than, like, what I'm 
expecting them to like, do. Look at how much the confusion already did. Yeah. Like, that's double resisted confusions. Yeah. Still there, I think, like, he shields again. Yeah, he really wants switch advantage because the only thing yeah. that will be able to destroy that Gengar is confusions. Mm -hmm. But with shields down, that can that Gengar will be able to pull back out of any pull type back of out. Especially yeah. since he landed a foul play on um your uh Wormadav as well. So he's playing out he's playing this out very smart. But then he goes into this, I just go into Wormadam and give away the switch. Wait, is it I know isn't your switch still up? Yeah, yeah. So like my switch was uh like already uh over, so like I could switch right there. And as soon as he Oh, actually I died there, my bad. Yeah. One shadow clock killed. Yeah, one shadow clock yeah, killed. You also made a mistake of throwing the iron head. Bug buzz is a much better move. Uh, uh, I was like looking at hard. ice uh, typing, so steel super effective. I was looking for that. But yeah, bug buzz probably would have done more. But then here, like, was where I had to, like, overfarm so much. Oh no, you have to throw an Earthquake here. No, so, like, actually, I mean, yeah, I would have to, but, like, at the same time, like, I go with Double Surf and keep my energy where I want it to be. Because I knew, like, he had uh, two Shadow Claws, so he needed uh, three more. So I, And I needed only two one shots, so that's what I went for. But this doesn't knock out, though, does it? It does, it actually does. Oh, what the hell? Yeah. So this was like all came down to like me uh, bringing in Wormadam. And he's switching out right there. I think like he should have taken a couple of confusions and stored energy. That's where he could have won if he stored like a Shadow Claw or something. So what you did there was you threw three Hydro Cannons. What, yeah. How much energy is one Hydro Cannon? Um... I actually don't know about that, but like I know like it's five and then five again and then four. So it's forty energy for a hydro cannon, sixty five okay. for an earthquake. Mm -hmm. So in total and that's one hundred twenty, and that yeah. would be one hundred thirty. But then you're also wasting the energy on, um, you're also wasting the energy on the turn that you're also spending while throwing the charge move. So okay. even though it's more expensive, going for two mm -hmm. earthquakes is actually um, pretty much the exact same energy, like turn count wise, because oh, okay. um, for forty energy, so one one what was it one twenty to one thirty, but then an extra turn throwing the hydro cannon means an extra okay. mud shot, for example, an extra okay. mud shot is nine energy. Um, so that's almost makes up for the 120 to 130. So you're using the exact same amount of turns. But what ends up happening is when you could have farmed to 100 energy, thrown the throw earthquake, and okay. then throw. have hydro. throw one mud shot and then hydro cannon on the on the um, Gengar. Gengar, rather yeah. than double hydro cannon refarming up to like that, because whatever <laughs> happens, you're throwing. Yeah either two hydro cannons or one earthquake at the lapras right so if yeah, we're looking yeah. at the lapras alone that's 80 energy on a lapras or 65. oh 65 yep so yeah. we're looking I, at I was like at the lapras. in the moment i was like okay maybe like i should have like thrown earthquake but at the same time i was like you know what um i'm gonna do is like i'm gonna farm and i know like uh what is gonna kill me is a charge move yeah. so all i really need to do is stay away from charge move so like literally i was counting uh, how many ice shards he can throw before I can throw the second surf. Yeah. Um, I could have actually probably gone 100 and Earthquake, that would have been better play no matter what. Um, but yeah, I don't know, like in the moment I probably did the wrong path. <laughs> hey, King of Charmanders, welcome to the stream. Yeah, it's always gonna be math. Uh, Mofo, it's AJ. Uh, the team that you see at the top left is the team run by Shinigami for this practice cup. So, um was that the final round yeah that was the final round oh yeah that that, yeah. that opponent really knew his stuff um mm -hmm. played really well especially around that uh 
like juking you out with that uh shift tree in round number two and then the yeah. lap or scale bash um and that fortress actually went better than i expected yeah else. fortress like had quite a few play against my team and i was like surprised with that i was like damn okay but i think what's most important is you needing to come in with the proper lines because your second yeah. line um going lapras over swamp are definitely a much better play uh mm -hmm. going with uh what do you call it keeping like against this time i think like i should have just kept Wormadam on bench uh no matter how you look at it yeah. like you yeah. managed you... to find a really good matchup in the third yeah round, but that yeah. risk comes i mean that that reward comes with a, a high risk as well right yeah everything has has its own cost you could have easily had that matchup um if you used a uh, Lapras or if you used a um, Swamper in, in place of that as yeah. well so there's that's why it, the teams that I build are the way they're built there are multiple answers to everything yeah so going into round number three we have Joe Unica Chow I don't know how you say that and oh no I clicked the wrong thing round three let's get this started Uh, nope, that's his Dre Flames. Oh wait, no, that's his Dre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, never mind. I I had to refresh that. <laughs> Back, speed faster. There we go. So, looking at this opponent's team, we finally see a Ferrothorn, and then we have a very very interesting Frostlass. So Lapras is going to be a really good pick. Um, you just have to keep it away from the Ferrothorn. That's it. Um, and how do we keep deal with the Ferrothorn? Uh, we have Galvantula and Marowak. So that's what we got to rely on. Um, so you either bring both or you always need to remember to bring one. Yeah, I think like the first uh, match I do not bring either. <laughs> so I think I'm pretty sure I'm going to lose this one because like uh, he does bring Ferrothorn. I'm not too sure about either. But uh, yeah, uh, I realized that after this first battle, I was like, okay, yeah, come on. Like, I didn't have an answer for that, like, at all. Actually, I did bring Venusaur for Ferrothorn, at least. So there was that. Uh, so you're, you're in a pretty tough situation. You played into the losing shield scenario. Mm -hmm. There is only, you only lose the one shield scenario supposedly if you shield the first rock slide oh okay and then you swapped into that yeah. when you could have thrown the sludge bomb first yeah this swap like i don't i still don't understand what the swap was um, but there was thunder as well so i was like what is going on in this match at that point <laughs> yeah that that's very confusing to me and i think like next he throws power whip so i was like what I know nobody can see me, but I'm blinking a lot. I'm like, what the hell did yeah. I just see? Um, yeah. So, right here, very bad shield. Because you know a Surf mm -hmm. won't KO. You know the Ice Shards won't KO either. How do you knock yeah. this thing out? Is with Sludge Bombs. You know you have a lot of energy. Mm -hmm. You know even if you come out of this matchup alive, you don't win it. That's a good swap. That's a good, you know. Yeah, because like he was farming a lot, so I was like, you know what? But your I'm Lapras is absolutely useless. Yeah, yeah, and Lapras probably would have had a uh, winning matchup against the uh, yeah for the sure. lady in the back. So yeah. So what I would have done was actually. Because okay, a different team. Let, let's just no no no. Let, let, let's just go back to the front with the lead and how. Because this is definitely gameplay. Um, yeah. That you could have won based on how you played it. So let's pull mm -hmm. up Wormadam versus a Crustle. Smackdown. This person went for no baits. He went for straight Iron Head. Let me this up. 
So you're losing the one shield because they just beat you to it based on CMP. Mm -hmm. And then in this, it's also kind of slightly based on IVs. Okay. And based on whether the opponent actually, I guess, you know, uh, gets a uh, fast move through. But we're going to be able to tell based on who reaches the, the, the what do you call it, the reaches the yellow first. So yeah. looking at the health right now, um, it may actually be a simultaneous KO, to be honest. Let me double check. See who hits the yellow first. So you both hit yellow at the same time. Same time. Yeah. So this is likely going to be a simultaneous KO. So it's not going to be in either person's favor. It may mm -hmm. come down to one HP. It may come down to like the the fast move animation completing first. But yeah, it's 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 not a for sure win on the opponent's side. But either way. Mm -hmm. Um, what this means is the one shield scenario that you lose, you played into it. You either go for the zero or you go into the, uh, or you go into the two. Um, same thing with that, uh, the, the other matchup, I can't remember. Uh, I think it was Galvantula and Shiftry. Same thing. Yep. Zero. Then, zero. For that one, zero was the only one play. Yeah. So yep. in this, farming down is fine. Uh, taking the charge move is pretty rough, but you have a lot of energy. And then right here, you should be throw the moment you see this Ferrothorn, you should be throwing the Sludge Bomb. Um, yeah. Because you know you cannot beat this Ferrothorn any other way. Think about all the ways you can beat the Pokemon right now. Are you I, sure? I definitely needed to. Uh... I should steal neutral damage. And then. Yeah. Surf's resisted, Skull Bash resisted, Sludge Bomb. Actually, resisted. what I really needed to do was like Sludge Bomb and like uh, chase to the third one. If they don't throw, try to over farm. And after that, like I needed to just farm down with the uh, Lapras. That was the play. Yeah. Uh, have you seen my GBL line with the Pelipper? Uh, Pelipper lead with the, what was that again? Uh, G Fisk. Uh huh. So. Remember what I do when I see a Deoxys swap in or lead? I let the counters deal resisted damage to my Pelipper and then mm. I swap after they get enough energy. For a charge move because yeah. charge move or Chief Fisk is wasted. Yeah. Okay. So this yeah. is the exact same scenario. Mm -hmm. They come in Ferrothorn, bullet yeah. seeds are double resisted. You can stay ah. in that matchup for a very long time yep. and then swap into Lapras. Yeah, because honestly, I think uh, I could have just even, uh, what's it called, uh, shielded my Venusaur if they really, because yeah. uh, I would have gone to like three then, and they would only shield one, and two actually almost put it like in farm down range. Yeah. So either way, no matter how you cut this uh, cloth, swapping mm -hmm. instantly is not the right play. Yeah, yeah, definitely not. Yep. Okay. At this, I realized like right in the moment, I was like, what was that swap? Okay, uh, and remember, going back to the advantages, you are already at a loss f in terms of switch advantage. You have mm -hmm. an energy advantage. Mm -hmm. And then I give away the switch. You give away okay. whatever advantage that is by swapping yeah. again. And you go oh, back into a yeah. neutral matchup where you already lost switch advantage because Lapras loses to Ferrothark. Mm -hmm. If you manage to pull the shield, or if you manage to deal chip damage off of that Ferrothorn, then Lapras yeah. may have a switch advantage against Ferrothorn. Yeah. So, uh, decent lead right here. I believe Haunter can win in the two shield because yeah. of um, the Shadow Punch and Shadow Claw dealing enough damage. Mm -hmm. So, Sarah, in other words, I'd don't play into the two shield. So this is yeah, perfect. I, I don't even play into like, uh, I think like I shield here to get mm -hmm. the second shield. Mm -hmm. And then I let it go. So this is where you're applying those things that you learned in the previous matches. If you're, yeah, you know yeah. you're going to lose, don't play into it. Yep.
Nice. And remember, he has thunder, so it's a good thing to remember what he has the first time or the second time. Mm -hmm. So I think like I see MP tied here, I'm not too sure. Um, yeah. He probably just hit the power whip. Yeah. So going for the bone club is actually point. smart. You know you have two. If he comes in haunted, yeah. you can throw right away. Throw right away. And you know you don't have to burn a shield because you're knocking it out right away. Mm -hmm. Here I go one over because I didn't want to throw shadow ball on haunter. But he didn't catch either, so that was pretty much over at that point. All right. Okay. That that matchup was pretty textbook. That was really well played. Mm -hmm. Shadow Ball over Shadow Bone on AWAG is a verdict for March. So if you ask me, Shadow Bone Shadow Ball is the correct move set to run. Bone Club is purely a bait move. There's no reason yeah. to run Bone Club ever for damage. And the moves, I mean the matchups that you lose by running Shadow Bone over Bone Club as your lowest energy charge move. Are all bait dependent to begin with so for example against frostlass your the opponent has to land i mean has to throw an avalanche that you shield in order for the frostlass to win if they don't do that you going straight shadow bone you win anyways so all of those matchups that you lose by not baiting because the way pv poke works is it assumes baits it always yeah. assumes you shield the bait it always assumes they land a nuke but that's not how it works in reality. So you essentially lose nothing by giving up the Bone Club. So if you ask me, Shadow Bone, Shadow Ball is the correct moveset always. This one is great textbook, I think, like straight up, you just go surf. Yep. Here, I think I. He baits with Avalanche. But at that point, like I was like, it doesn't yep. really matter because I'm gonna get to surf anyways again. Yep. yep. So never go for the high risk play unless you are so behind that you need yeah. that's like your one win condition. Here like the both had like decent answer to it, so I didn't stay in. Uh because Wormadam can handle and Venusaur can handle. I think he might be running Swampert in the back. And he's not shielding here. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> so at that point, I was like, okay, doesn't matter. Wormadam can win with one shield. Yeah. And I knew from earlier match in the rounds, uh, that like one earthquake does not KO, so I don't even shield the first one. So Tribird, if you want to run Fire Blast, because that's the only good fire charge move it has. Uh, your other choice is actually to run Hex, Shadow Bone, mm -hmm. Fire Blast. That is very viable. With a 4 energy per turn fast move, Fire Blast is not actually something you can't get to anymore. Um, the 4 energy per turn versus the 3.33 energy per turn Fire Spin is quite a big difference. And with the bulk that Alolan Marowak has, you can actually get to multiple fire blasts if you really need to. Um, mm -hmm. You're going to lose the matchups where you need to get to three if you don't bait. Um, with so in the two shields and your opponent shields two fire blasts, you're clearly not going to get to 80 times three energy, um, which is what 160 plus a, which is 240. 240 energy is insane. You're never going to get there. Like same thing like a Whiskash. You can get to two blizzards easy, but in the three, but against Altaria, you can't tr triple blizzard 
you're not going to get there before Dragon breasts you down. So stuff like that. Yeah, the only down uh, grade from that, I think, is like uh, some of the Pokemons that you can actually straight up farm down with Fire Spin. Uh, you won't be able to do with Hex, but like at the same time, uh, you can like work around that. It's not that hard to do. Hex is not a bad move. The, the buff actually yeah, makes yeah. it very, very good. It's a Shadow Claw that does slightly less damage. Mm -hmm. um, which is a little annoying because it's a three turn move as well, but um, it's, it's unfair. Nothing we can do there. Um, so let's get this fourth team on the screen uh, Guzlo. So this opponent has a little Marowak, Galvantula. Fortress, Shift Tree, Azu, and Alolan Muck. The Alolan Muck that I talked about earlier, which is the thing that gives everybody trouble, but at the same time, no one actually has issues with it. Because it only wins things barely or loses barely in every scenario. So. So against his team, like I kind of realized that Venusaur, Swampert, Core actually works pretty well. Like actually really well. So, um, in the first match, I try something, <laughs> but I think from the second match, you'll see me go back to Venus or Swampert Core. So with the Venus or Swampert Core, um, your probably main concern is to supplement it with something that can beat both Fortress and Shift Tree. Mm -hmm. So, um, so Marowak. running a little in Marowak or Galvantula is fine because this is not Shadow, remember? Um, yeah, yeah. You don't die from a single uh, foul play. Especially if you do play into these shield scenarios, it's going to deal less and less damage. Yeah. And there you go. Oh, he does was a that really a swap? Yeah, he does a really good catch there. <laughs> and I was like, doesn't matter really, because <laughs> I'm going to eat you up pretty much. That point, like it's literally, I don't even need to shield and just farm. Wow, down. he just goes straight for the mirror shot. Mm -hmm. So it's an attack drop. Um, he could have actually gotten to an earthquake. He hit two mirror yeah, shots, which I think is so, yeah. seventy energy. Interesting play. So the Azu comes in, the first Azu we've seen. So with the attack debuff, he can even tank three of these, as you can see right there. The so swapping out is not actually a bad play. Um, saving yeah. that energy. Um, was your? I'm, I'm gonna rewind a quick sec. See if your timer was actually. Were you burning down was, your timer? Yeah, you're burning down. Your timer. Yeah, I was burning that down timer pretty much at that point. Because. Uh, this suit is still pretty healthy, so like I was like, you know what, it can put in more work if the buff the buff is not there. Yeah. So I'll just switch out, and then as soon as it comes, I switch out. And because you have two answers to the Azumarill, this is one mm -hmm. thing I tell people: don't swap if you only have one answer to something. Yeah. If you have one answer to something, let whatever it is you have currently in play let it faint, and then pin down the Pokemon. With the counter that you do have but mm -hmm. because you do technically have two answers to uh the azumarill you're okay with swapping so here i did not shield the ice beam because i knew like ice beam is not gonna kill it's the leaf blade that's gonna one hit uh, ko me so i was like i'll save the shield for that well that's that i'm i find that actually kind of interesting you shielding the um leaf blade, uh, the leaf blade. Uh, I think, like, at that point, I realized that my Galvantula is pretty low. So I have to shield there to KO and catch this right here or something like that. I don't even know what I was doing here. But, uh, yeah. Uh, and I think I lose this because of this, right? Trying to catch, yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> All right, let's, let's see that again. Um... So you get the earthquake there. Hydro cannon, you're just one turn short. Yeah. 
let's see. So there you farm. No, you don't farm. You don't undercharge either. Undercharging would be Actually, too risky. Yeah, it was like CMP tie. I should yeah. have undercharged, but and then you yeah, can't do I... anything here. Yep. And now Another no shield. Could have been like letting go um, of Swamper and then so, just farming down with Marowak. Yeah, your mistake was actually swapping altogether. So yeah. keeping keeping in mind that how much energy they throw uh, and how mm -hmm. much energy a charge move costs. I speak yeah. all of Azumarill's uh, charge moves are, a, are are relatively expensive. So he yeah. leaves with an Ice Beam. Mm -hmm. He throws this, sure, whatever. At most, he's at 90 energy. Yeah. He just burnt 55. Mm -hmm. So he's at 40, 30, 40 energy. So let's just assume he has three bubbles in. So how do, how many to a hydro pump? Seven. Right? Yeah. I actually thought he had four bubbles in, so he needed three. So I switched on the third one. But it was the fourth one that hit, and after that he gets Hydro Pump. So and if you had even thrown a Bone Club before actually swap it out, you would yeah. have actually won. So mm -hmm. you swap way too early. Yeah. So uh, remember he knocked out your Swampert with an Ice Beam. Mm -hmm. It takes at least four bubbles yeah. to the Hydro Pump. So that's one, two, three... Four, you would have won CMP and got Ooh. the Bone Club. Yeah. If he had a hundred energy to begin with, yeah, he he probably wasn't there. So that's the he first probably thing. wasn't. Yeah. The yeah. second thing is your shield right here or here. Oh yeah, yeah. So he comes in. He's scared. He has no shields. He might be afraid of a sludge wave. He doesn't care. Mm -hmm. He's throwing his energy. He probably he's a one snarl at most. And you went for yeah. the earthquake, so that's the other issue. Yeah. You should have thrown the hydro cannon as soon as it came in. Chipped okay. away at it because Chip hydro cannon hydro cannons are very very uh, cheap and very quick to get to. So mm -hmm. there's no way he's gonna over farm either. Yeah. So the moment you land that hydro cannon, you don't have to shield. Yeah. And even if you did land, uh, did not land that hydro cannon, mm -hmm. then you can farm down with the far spin. Yo, trainer Ram with the twenty three raid. Thank you for the raid coming in. We are going over Shinigami's um, practice tournament for the Bar Marsh Cup. Uh, we are currently in round number four, uh, looking at the battles right now. So. Because you shielded the Swampert, your Swampert's yeah. too healthy. You're giving the Azumarill extra farm, oh. which is why you had to force the Sack Swamp. Um, yep. And then when you are, I believe, if you were to come in with the Swampert at, I guess, it 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 is around 40% HP. Let's pull up PV Poke again. Uh, Marowak versus Shift Tree. How many fire spins does it take? Four fire spins actually deals 40% of a Shift Tree. So let's see how much the Shift Tree is at. Shift Tree is right now at 50%. So fire oh. fire spins would have knocked it out at this range. <laughs> so he throws the Leaf Blade. Five fire spins, so guess what? It gets you to a Shadow Ball as well. Yeah. And so, Shadow Ball would have KO'd Hazu from the range it yeah. was at. Plus, he would have only gone to one move, which I could have shielded instead of shielding so far. Yeah. So the most, most straightforward play was essentially... Letting Swampert go. Letting Swampert go. Let him throw and throwing the... Hydro Cannon maybe here? No, no, no. That, that doesn't even matter. Yeah. He throws this, knocks you out, you come in with a Lolan Marowak, you shield the foul play, he cannot get to the foul play and a leaf blade, nor can he get to even two leaf blades, because yeah. five fire spins, 
I mean, he might actually be able to get to two Leaf Blades if he has excess energy, but one Leaf Blade doesn't knock out. So, you Fire Spin all the way down, you Shield, and then the moment that Azu comes in, you throw a Shadow Ball. Shadow Ball deals 50%, I mean, not 50%, 35% to an Azu. Um, right here, 37% actually, depending on IVs. And then you would have instant knock, instantly knocked it out. So, yeah, right there. That is about 30, 40%. It would have one shot it. So, that would have been the most. Plus, even if it doesn't KO, he would have used his energy yeah. uh, to kill my Marowak, and then I had uh, three Galvantula. volt switches worth of Galvantula. Yeah. 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 So yeah, that, that matchup was a little bit of a messy play at the end, but um, mm -hmm. a learning experience, that's what we do these yeah. for. Yep. Uh, once again, thank you Rem for, for coming in with the with your crowd. Uh, we are doing the Self Marsh Cup for those who are interested. Thank you for the fall, Dr. Pants. Thank you for the fall, Grizzly. All right, let's hop into the second battle of um, this opponent, Guzlo. Uh, right here. So, your opponent brought, um, Shift Tree, Azu, and... Can't remember. <laughs> Can't remember, to be honest. Yeah. Let's see. Shift uh -huh. Tree... Fortress. Okay. Shift Tree, yeah. Fortress, Azu. Let's look at what would be good against Shift Tree, Azu, Fortress. First thing I see, Alola Marowak beats Fortress really hard, beats Shift Tree except for in the one shield. So depending on how you play that out, and if you mm -hmm. call the bait, um, and then you can obviously, with that energy gains, especially on Fortress, land a couple nukes on Azu. Um, yeah. Once again, Wormadam, not a good choice. Do not look at that Pokemon. Yeah. Lapras has good play against uh, Shift Tree and Azumarill. Um, yeah. You are healthy enough, you are tanky enough to let a sh um, survive a Leaf Blade, land a Surf, the Ice Shards will knock out the rest of it. And Galvantula mm -hmm. is actually good against all three of those Pokemon. So, looking at the, the Pokemon and the, the options you have, um, Venusaur does well against them as well. So Venusaur, Galvantula, Marowak, Lapras, these are all very good options. Um, See if there's anything in particular that is weak or that is strong against all four of these Pokemon. Um, Lola and Marowak could be an issue, so make sure you bring Lapras with that set of Pokemon, um, which I do see you leading right now, which is good. Galvantula does okay with that energy gain, especially mm -hmm. against that Azu, which we have seen. Um, and then. I guess you could run any of the other following Pokemon, but we will see. Actually, I can technically cheat and see by, by scrolling back a little. So you bring Swampert. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so my main reason here was like uh, that I need to bring Lapras to cover that and Galvantula covers that. But Lapras and Galvantula kind of struggle against Marowak. So I brought Swampert okay. to cover that. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, my my issue with bringing Swampert is without Sludge Wave, you do not become an Azu counter. So yeah. you're actually not. So Swampert actually only does well against um, like half of their team, uh, because even against Fortress, it's kind of semi bait dependent on whether they land the Earthquake. Uh, and with energy gains, Shadow Ball can nuke you. You cannot take two Dark Pulses from a Muck. So it, yeah. it, it's one of, like I said, Muck is very, you know, um, energy dependent, very bait dependent, very, it gets close matchups against everything. It's quite bulky as well. So that's what happens here. You'll be able to see one Dark Pulse takes you right into yellow. So you cannot take more than that. So that's the one good thing, but also the bad thing with Muck. Um, so charge move dependent that it won't be able to get to those uh if it doesn't get to those charge moves it won't win anything so swap right here so that galvantula putting in work because we called the azu and we called the shift tree 
Yeah. So rather than running Fortress, they ran for Alolan Muck. So similarly weak to Galvantula. Um, if anything, expect mm -hmm. this opponent to bring Alolan Marowak in the very last match. That's the one yeah. thing you should be expecting. So that was pretty straightforward. Not much else to say with this matchup. Uh, but going into the very last matchup, remember, they're going to bring Alolan Marowak, but make sure you bring Lapras or Swampert, um, or even both, to be honest, because both of them, because Lapras does very well against Azumarill, can deal with Shiftry, Swampert can deal with Galvantula. Um, so, so they kind of have, like, cross coverage, if you guess mm -hmm. you get what I mean. Which is the why, yeah. which is why I created the team like it was, um, yeah. and so then how I literally do you... run the same team again, but like lead with Swampert I think this time. So Pretty how do you sure. supplement Swampert Lapras, um, possibly with? Uh... Actually, you don't really need to, to be honest. Uh, you yeah. can bring a, a hard shift counter if that's what yeah. you want. Um... Yeah. So yeah, you're getting there. There you go. Swampert, Lapras, Galvantula. Really good line going into this final match. Really good lead. So here he makes a mistake of not throwing lunch there, I guess. Because, like, yeah. once he double shields there, I don't think I shield at all. So Lunge is going to chunk. What? Whoa, 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 what? <laughs> I don't know what happened there either. Like, I was like, what? Discharge, really? So I shield. I was like, okay. <laughs> there I farm up because I know he has a uh, steam hydro pump, I think. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to farm up and Vapras. Yeah. That single move? There's no way that single move... I mean, it could be single move, because it's a 1475 one. And they yeah. don't want to double move it. But, like, if you're going to single move it, you're going to want to run lunge. Yeah. So that that's actually really smart of you paying attention to what moves that they have mm -hmm. knowing they get to this last charge move faster than you knowing it's an ice beam so very smart yeah they're switching galantula here so i was like okay that works too what? yeah i don't know what the heck happened there but i was like okay cool i'll take it whatever you give me i'll take it because like lunge uh sorry skull bash <laughs> Either I kill Azumarill or I, or I kill half health, more than half health, kill Angela. <laughs> Up to you. I think like he should have just let Azumarill die there. Because but... he threw the discharge, um, they're not actually able to get to, uh, what do you call it, the sludge wave, supposedly. Mm. But you also take a crap ton of damage from that second Dark Pulse. Uh, okay. So, like, that's the trade off. So if you're playing a lunge scenario, he needs to land a sludge wave to knock you out. But because you're not going for the lunge scenario, Dark Pulse gets really close to knocking you out and it's based on IVs. Yeah, my Galvantula is I think rank 11. So <laughs> most of the Pokemon that you had like here, I was like, okay, these are all really good ranked ones I have. So I'll just run them. So yeah, that, that was pretty textbook. Yeah. Uh, that very first battle, we talked over how you could have played that better. Yeah. And then let's go into the final round with CO is a beast. I've seen this name before. All right. Him and I, we got into conflict that you'll see in like the last battle or the third match. So we'll just talk about it then. Wait, hold Until on. Then, just... Do I not have the last battle? Do you not? Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. I might not have it. <laughs> Shit. 
Um, do you have the link? Yeah. I can. Okay. Or if you can find it there, then that's good too. Drive. One, two, three, four, five, round five. Um. Actually, I can I can play it. Oh, yeah, I got the link. Uh, oh, I'm gonna okay. I'm just gonna play it off this. Oh, ah, everybody can see it on stream. Oops. All right, let let's just do this. Wait, picture in picture. Can I do that? No. Yes. No. Full screen. We're working with what we got. Cause I'm bad at this. Kappa. <laughs> nah, this is all good. Alright, we did it. There we go. Alright, let's play this final matchup out. Um up to one point two. Uh there we go. Scrub confirmed. Absolutely. So Looking at this team, we see that very, very problematic Whimsicott cut that I first had issues with when creating the team. But now we have a Venusaur, we have a Lapras, we have Wormadam, and we have Wool and Marowak. So we actually have a lot of counters to Whimsicott um, compared yeah. to the first version of my team. So um, no way they're bringing that thing. Uh, well, our team's actually well built against uh venusaurs so very good catch so this is going to be the same thing um yeah but also at the same time remember what counters do you have for what this is actually your best pokemon against venusaur yeah I so mean, exactly Ferrothor. this line i literally built for the purpose of that i will go into lapras to pull out the ferrothon and once i get rid of ferrothon uh, oh or no, once yeah, I... it has no flash cannon. You're winning. You're winning this. Yeah. So I was like, the whole purpose of this line was like to get rid of, uh, I think, Ferrothon. And then after that, Swampert has good play against everything. Or uh, Lapras has good plays against everything. That was my first catch against his team. Um, yeah, so that, I was like, you know what? Smart. I'll just yeah, do a sacrificial Swampert play for the first match. So I think this is the battle where... Uh, the conflict happens i'm not too sure yeah it might be but you'll see soon enough <laughs> so i do this wait until he's at the power whip or one shot i think and then throw and then here he switches and i switch so here like my take is that he's one more shot ahead of me because he didn't throw much shot on venusaur when in the lead matchup but he threw one much shot when he switched in here yeah so he was one much shot ahead. Yeah. I didn't let him throw any extra much shots in here. So we are, he's one ahead still. Yeah. But this is so dependent on the earthquake as well. So yeah. So we'll I get this. an extra much shot in there. So like I already have hydro cannon now. You'll see. See. So I caught up to him on the nerds just because I played that. Yeah. And then here we lag a little bit. Because I, you'll see that like my Wi-Fi switches to LTE for some reason, oh, yeah. and we lag a little bit, and yeah. So he says that they lagged, so I was not supposed to get to this hydro cannon, and he was supposed to get to hydro cannon before, and he says no, that, that like been based on CMP then. Yeah, and I was like, um, I can show you what happened, and like it was based on CMP, and I won the CMP there. That's how this battle went. But he was saying like he could have gone he, to he doesn't battle. win this match anyways exactly so <laughs> that was what i was telling him he was like oh no i would have gone to hydro cannon before and i would have pressure shield i was like bro no you fall I'm... down with lapras and then you yeah i literally took care of your ferrothon the only counter to lapras just so i could do this and why would i shield my swampert there so that was the whole thing like right there um and he was like uh uh, Crustle beats Swampert, uh, beats Lapras, I was like, no, it does not. Even if you, like, bait properly, even then Crustle loses to Swamp, uh, to Lapras, so he had, like, the whole thing, but uh, then eventually we decided it's just practice match. Cross, so, Crustle, like, Crustle okay. wins in the one, and it's also dependent on it. No, 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 no. Uh, Lapras wins in the one, 
but it's yeah, also dependent yeah. on IVs for the for the zero and the two. Um, yeah. But so the fact that he had energy... muck in the back, there was no way no win condition for him. Yeah, that's what I was trying to tell him. Like, uh, I would have gotten at least one five shot worth of energy advantage. Uh, so I don't think you could have won from there. I think what you should have actually done was because you had that energy advantage because he threw the yeah. hydro cannon. You should have just gone yeah. for the earthquake at the end, can... not for the yeah. double hydro cannon. Yeah, that was like that was like I realized as well. Like when I rewatched this battle, just because uh, he was complaining about it to me, and I was like, okay, let me rewatch. But uh, yeah, that could have been totally the play. Like uh, bait the first time, second time throw I earthquake because I was not gonna shield anyways. Yeah, that was the play. So you could have completely avoided that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Going into round number two, we have Swampert, Venusaur, Alolan, Marowak giving up that Lapras. So you did put in a strong Ferrothorn counter this time, which is actually good. Yeah. Lead Swampert into a good matchup again. Oh, wait, no, no, no. You, you led uh, Ferrothorn last time. Yeah. Uh, and then this is full RPS from then on, I assume. Yeah, uh, this match was, I think, pretty RPS. Like, uh, I don't shield, or I shield and farm down completely because then I'll be healthy and, like, he has to throw something at me. Yeah. Uh, cannot farm down with any Pokemon, even if he brings a uh, Crestle. And even if he brings Crestle, like, it'll be a long farm. So down. if he had actually Flash Cannon, uh, game number one would have been super, super tough to come back to. Um, game number one, yeah, I would have probably lost the <laughs> one then. So with a shield disadvantage, uh, wait, are you at a shield disadvantage? Yes, but I got the shield back because okay, I was yeah, like yeah. at hundred so energy. So this this is actually really good. Going for the no shield, uh, no no bait, uh, guarantees yeah. that you can, you will either come out with the Pokemon or you come out with shield. So that's a lot of that's something that a lot of mistakes people do uh, is when they're behind, they try to go for the high risk high reward play, mm. but. There's also a guaranteed play. You're not you're not backed up into a corner far enough where that is your only win condition. And yeah. like I said, when you have some type of advantage, remember you can pull that advantage to regain the other ones. If you have an energy advantage, you can regain shield advantage. If you have switch advantage, you can regain a different advantage. And it depends on the Pokemon and how you play it out. And you played it out textbook. With that energy advantage, Giving up shield advantage is perfectly fine because you can regain shield advantage. The one way is you, the one way you lose is if you try to bait a, a bone pump there. and they yeah. don't shield. That is the only way you lose. <laughs> so, a lot of people start looking for shield uh, lose conditions, even though they're not yeah. like, uh, like they're not actually looking for them. But that's I, I call it looking for lose conditions. But yeah. Um, if there's with that much energy, wins. like yeah. I was definitely sure that like I was gonna get to second shadow ball before they get to their first, so I was just playing for the double shadow ball. Yeah. So because either I take both shields or battle crazy damage. This tournament, we have Marowak, Swampert, and Venusaur, I believe. Mm -hmm. Not the most favorable lead. Uh, it's yeah. not terrible, terrible. You can chip away at it a little. Yeah. Man, those dark pulses just come so quick. Yeah. So, uh, I think like after this, he also farms down. I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, Lola and Mero, uh, Lola and, uh, Muck is just letting it farm down is just there's... fine because you have only one counter to this Pokemon, right? It's Swampert. You cannot swap in Venusaur. If you swap into Swampert, then they swap into yeah. counter and you have nothing else to deal with this. So this yeah. is fine. If they have a whack Ferrothorn in the back, then this game is pretty much a wrap. But we'll see. Yeah, um, I am pretty sure they do. Or actually, they don't. Uh, they probably have their own Swampert in the back. I'm not too sure. But like, I think they're here. They don't switch again. 
Yeah. They have yeah, the no switch means uh, it's not a Marowak, so there's still play. There's still play. And like I said, <clears throat> if there's no reason to bait, don't bait, especially when the energy difference is so minuscule. So just go I think like those. here I realized that they have Swampert in the back, so I should shield Thunders, but instead they throw Power Whip. Yeah, which is that's actually pretty unfortunate. Guess. Yeah. And then there's the throw thunder, I think. Or forward. Um, yeah, I don't know. Like a lot of people like to throw thunder and then go straight forward for some reason. Maybe there's a play there. Hmm. Yeah, it was like after I realized there was a bumper in the back. Um, given the fact like how it played out, I shouldn't have switched. <laughs> yeah. But... Should have either gone for the earthquake or because yeah. like if you had yeah, gone yeah. for earthquake, he doesn't shield, you win. If he mm -hmm. does shield, you get to a frenzy then... plant on this. Yeah. So I think like what I could have done is like saved Frenzy on this and then switched and done the whole. Yeah. Yeah. Whole so swapping out with energy is always, if yeah, possible, swap. is always a good thing. And the other thing is, um, once you get to this point, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's two ways you win. You. Th mm -hmm. The only way you win is if you land a, the first way, land a frenzy plant. Second way, land an earthquake. Yeah. But like, even if you have frenzy, I mean, even if you have Venusaur pinned onto the Ven uh, onto the Swampert, you are so low that you will not be able to farm down with double super effective vine whips, anyways. So yeah. no matter the matchup, no matter the the scenario, it's going to be charge move dependent. Mm -hmm. And the opponent has an extra shield. So the only way yeah. you come out on top is if you land a Frenzy Plant. That is your best win condition. So swapping out right there, probably not the best move. The best thing to do would actually do to um, put up the shield, keep farming to 100, or yeah. pull the second shield off of that, um, uh, off of that, what do you call it? The Ferrothorn. And yeah. then uh, potentially earthquake because when you come into this um when you come into this swamper right here, you're almost at an earthquake, and mm -hmm. your swamper is pretty low as well. You're probably yeah. going to be able to get two hydro cannons, probably not even a hydro cannon uh, 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 earthquake. Yeah, maybe maybe really closely, but um, but. Overall, the win the one win condition I would be looking for is literally have a frenzy plant stacked on Venusaur. That's it. That's like your one yeah. win condition. <clears throat> yeah, that was the main uh, thing that I didn't do there. Because um, uh, I think uh, what I thought there was like he's he does have energy or like he's going to get energy in the next bullet seat or something like that. And I wanted to waste that energy he had or force him to shield. Because once I would have gone into this, if he would have shielded this, he could have farmed me down. But I could have also gone with the Venusaur. I could have. So with this that last bullet seed, he just makes it to um he just makes it to the power whip or the thunder. So yeah. as he throws um, So he shields this. Throws here. One, two, three, four. Yeah, he should be right at the power whip, not even a thunder, but he's probably going yeah. to throw the power whip. So if yeah. he throw, shields this, you shield that power whip. Okay. You keep farming. You count to four again. You throw yeah. that frenzy plant. Mm -hmm. And then you swap. At that uh, point, he has no shields, right? Yeah, because he will shield you, that. Yeah, and then now, now it gives you the opportunity to nuke them. Yeah. So 
that that's the um that's the yeah save thing. saving energy on venusaur would have like won me that game in particular yeah. um because like i realized like as soon as he didn't switch out of that that he did not have an answer for venusaur in the back um yeah. So, yeah, so i started saving my venusaur but like i didn't save it enough just in hydrogen range. Let's see. Well, let's let's relook at that line. You had Venusaur, Warper. Oh yeah, you lost lead. You come in with. Uh, so one one thing you do, which is kind of weird too, is I think you throw a couple mud shots before you actually swap out too. Here. Yeah, you threw yeah. four, five, five mud shots before you swapped out. Yeah, that is, that is a lot of damage you're taking, even if it is just a bolt seed. Mm -hmm. Those. Oops. Yeah, I was, I was actually trying to catch a power whip, but oh, he's no, still no, no. true. Yeah, it doesn't matter what, like, if you're trying to catch, like, when you're trying to catch a charge move, you're trying to mm -hmm. mitigate damage, right? Yeah, yeah. But it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. If fast moves are doing damage, damage. Yeah, yeah. If if the fast moves are doing damage, and if all moves are being resisted by the other Pokemon, for example, Venusaur in this scenario, yeah. then it doesn't really matter. You're mitigating charge of all like all damage the moment you you swap. And oh, if yeah. they have an RPS uh, uh, a Pokemon coming in, that's if yeah. it's a Marowak, you're screwed anyways. There's no win condition. Yeah. But, Plus, I think like another thing would be that like if I switch right away then the match would have been more in my favor. Yeah. Like the Venus yeah. or on matchup instead of like me doing the whole switch and throw Hydro in the back. Yeah. That's that's another one, yeah. So, well, let me, so you're currently just in the yellow. You're sitting at 45%. Yeah. And then you leave this in the red. You just lost 20% of HP mm -hmm. at least. Which would have actually helped you to get to the earthquake at the very end, which would have let you yeah. go earthquake and hydro at the very end. Yeah. So that that that's the other error that um, that I picked up on at the very end. So a couple things here and there. Um, but overall, like you're you're playing well. Um, you you know how to play. Um, yeah. The most important thing for you is being able mm -hmm. to. Um, your your lines are all right as well. Uh, you've got like one or two lines that are a little uh, kind of questionable, but they're, they're yeah. I think they're they're still perfectly viable in the situations you put them in. Um, mm -hmm. I think the thing that you need to work on is lining up uh, your advantages, being able to identify. Um, what scenarios where you are currently losing to just give yeah. it up because you're trying to you're sometimes you you're going back to oh this pokemon beats this pokemon but uh it it's not playing out like the sims do because for example the energy discrepancy or the shield discrepancy you, you need to you need to think more creatively uh, and go um and and stop sticking to just this Pokemon beats this Pokemon, or this Pokemon loses this Pokemon. You need to start applying uh, that this Pokemon with a shield beats this Pokemon. This Pokemon with an energy advantage beats this this Pokemon. If I've already lost, then this Pokemon with this advantage. So you gotta apply the advantages to each one of these matchups now, because you like you're like I can tell that you know how to play. Uh, you're you, you've played a lot of these matchups very straightforward. You haven't been looking for lose conditions like a lot of students that i've coached um which yeah. which is a very very important thing that people need to first work on um and i think you're past that point you need to start applying these things in a more kind of uh, complex way where uh where this team actually fits you very well where you're able to um like i said for example when i say when when PV Poke spits out the weaknesses and says Pelipper is weak or is strong against our team, you can say no, it's not because I can play it this way. You need to start yep. applying those um, effectively, uh, taking a second look at what shield scenarios that might be. For example, um, 
For example, if you go straight Confusion, you cannot win this matchup. Uh, if they go straight Weather Ball, can I win? No. And then you look at other matchups. Um, what is it? Uh, Swampert versus... No. What, what's something like? Lap Lapras versus Cradley. One that I talked about a lot. Um, if yeah. they go straight Grass Knot, can they still win? They cannot win. So these are the things you need to start applying. Um, <laughs> so um, start applying the shield scenario differences. Start saying... If I don't win this matchup, for example, uh, the Pelper versus Wormadam matchup, if I do not win in any matchup, can I still pull a shield knowing uh, I'm still going to lose? So if I go zero shields and they double weather ball, uh, will I be able to pull a shield? Maybe depending on IVs, let's see. No, but mm -hmm. there's going to be other scenarios where it does. For example, um, for example, uh, Galvantula versus Shadow Shift Free, where I take a shield, yeah. lose the man. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to look for another one because, you know, like we we, we were talking about the same matchups over and over again. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. this, um, if your opponent does not shield the first Bone Club, yeah, um, and you. Change this up a little so it's a little more straightforward. Straight bone club. So your opponent does not shield the straight first bone club, uh, but you shield the first dark pulse. And you go like, oh, is there a chance I can win? So you shield the second bone club. I mean you shield the second um uh, dark pulse. Do they get to a third dark pulse? Uh, based on IVs, so they have 4 HP, so based on IVs, they may or may not get to it. Um, but, for example, if they have bad IVs, really bad IVs, pretend that they do. Um, in this scenario, you, you can decide, I can farm down uh, by spending 2 shields and coming out with 50 energy right here, right? I come out with 50 <laughs> energy, I want to farm down, I want the switch advantage, so I'm going to double shield. I don't care about my shield. Uh, I don't care about my shields at this point. I want energy. I want switch, and I'd be I'll be able to pull that shield back later. Because when you come out of this matchup, you're gonna have a shadow ball ready almost. So yeah, you're you're halfway there. I'm seeing that you're able to do that in some scenarios, but you're not able to do that in others. So that's mm -hmm. what I want you like. I think that comes more. into play from um, how much I've played. I think uh, so. I played like so for maybe like four months now like not even four probably barely four seriously uh, so like i'm Damn. not yeah yeah <laughs> so like i've only like done uh enough matchups like i don't know all the matchups but i know uh alolan marowak matchups because uh, i've played it uh, him in one of the cups i know alolan muck matchups because i've played him in one of the cups galvantula matchups i don't know shadow shift matchups i don't know because uh, i haven't played him or played people with them so like it's more like a learning curve for me kind of because right. i cannot just go off base of like what simulations tell me yeah um but uh yeah a lot of pokemon that like come in gbl those i know those matchups i know i know when they're gonna get to what and how much damage it's gonna do to my pokemon um but uh yeah like the pokemon which are like straight up like i won't see them again kind of pokemon those matchups like i've been like studied that much to like uh, really understand like how should i be playing and that's where like uh your input comes in and like i'm enjoying this absolutely like I, honestly i i've uh, i feel like your experience is um your the, the your knowledge is actually above what i would expect for somebody who's played for four months um you're probably sitting about like I, I i would think you've played for a full year at least already with with the way you play um and and that may 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 come uh, gbl may have come into play having like a lot of people coming from gbl moving into uh self but um that that depends on the person as well but overall like i i think you're you're headed down a really good uh, path and you're if you're improving at this rate or you're learning at this rate you're you're doing absolutely fantastic 
Yeah, I think like, uh, which was Forest Cup, like this past uh, couple of months ago, I think, was my first cup ever. And that too, like I only played like last two weeks of it. Yeah. That was a lot RPS Cup, but like, uh, it was just fun. Because I had a Stone Edge Blaze again, and I was like, you know what, <laughs> I'm gonna use it. All right. Uh, any oh. more questions for me? Thank you for the follow, Frequently Bays. Um, yeah, we went through five rounds of Shinigami's Marsh Cup practice tournament. Went four and one. Uh, Shiny Hunter Ben ended up taking home uh, that 5 0 win for that tournament. But these are what practice cups are for. Um, that team he has used for this cup. He. Um, He uh, he used. <laughs> Fuck you, Speedy. <laughs> I'm reading it while I'm talking. I'm like, oh shit. Um, uh, he 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 pulled off of my team building stream from uh, two weeks ago. I will be going over the next self meta uh, team building whenever that comes out on a Monday or Wednesday, as per usual. Um, yeah, if anybody in chat has any questions or if Shinigami himself has any questions for me, feel free to ask them now. My biggest question was uh, only like the shift three matchup. Uh, but uh, yeah, like I, I since I watched the whole stream that you put on for uh, team building, I realized like it's not like uh, one Pokemon matchup. It's more like team effort matchup. So. That's where I went wrong with shift tree, I think. Absolutely. Um, be, it, it's it's also um, it's also really hard when to team build. Team build is actually mm -hmm. one of the things I'm very bad at, and it's taken me a very 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 long time to actually be able to do adequately. And I don't think I I, I come up with the best teams. I I think my teams are average. Um, it's just that they are suited for my play style and i think mm -hmm. your play style is actually very similar to mine um you you, you think very methodically you you and you're, you're getting there um and uh and and that that's 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 something i'm kind of i'm intrigued to to, to watch you kind of play because it's it's so similar to mine um you 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 build these lines that are meant to not care whether they have this pokemon in their line or or it's kind of like the same way i build lines where uh, in gbl where i build triple counters to azu i tri build triple counters to talk uh, i build triple counters to reggie's deal or i build triple counters to uh um what's the newest cup bronzong like that yeah. that's the way i play um and, and your, your your lines are kind of built similarly where you're like okay I, I need to deal with this thing um, so so that's the thing you need to focus on, um, being able to uh, be clear on what you want to do with your lines. And and I yeah. saw saw that in some of their lines, and, and that's 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 very important as well. Um, don't hesitate on uh, what what you really want to get out of your team or your line. Yeah. Yeah, like I really like this line. Like when I was using it, I was like, okay, cool. Like I really actually understand the in, ins and outs of it. Uh, I mean, that comes from the fact that, like, I already had all these Pokemon ready, so, like, I knew that I had used them in the past. Uh, so I was like, okay, cool, I, like, nothing is gonna be straight up new to me. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, everything just balanced out perfectly. And I actually enjoyed, like, really enjoyed this line, like, uh, against, like, some of the people, like, Shadow Shifri, like, I really, like, it was challenging, but at the same time, like, since I won the last battle, I was like, okay, cool. I could have improved, but like still, I could actually work around this Pokemon. It's not like I'm just sitting ducks in there. Yeah, there, there's always play. That that's why I build the teams and the lines that I do. I always try to find play, even if even against even even against the Pokemon where you have you're, you have five Pokemon weak to it. Yeah, one of the Pokemon that has five Pokemon weak, like out of the five Pokemon weak to it, three of them probably have some type of play that you can pull out of your you're behind like, like mm. for example um 
Like like that time, like like you 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 threw an earthquake on the shift tree with with Swamper. You would not think that an earthquake hydro cannon uh, Swamper would be able to beat a shift tree. And in that case, throwing that earthquake was was didn't work out. Um, yeah. The, the way you wanted it to, but it's a play. Yeah. And and Wormadam, for example, has bug buzz. It loses yeah. to shift tree really hard. But if you can manage to find that scenario, there there is that scenario. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And Speedius, you you asked you you gave me like a one day time frame to mash as much as I could into your head. That that that's on you. I mean, and and then the aftermath, you you already won, so I had to slap you around a bit. So. <laughs> and to be fair, you brought a Skarmory into a four times strong against Skarmory team. You deserve that. So, um, seems to be about it. Uh, I am going to, uh, for, for obviously those who joined late into the stream, um, this is Shinigami's 4-1 Marsh Cup t uh, practice tournament. You can head on and click my face on Twitch and then uh, go to the past broadcast uh, and rewatch the stream. I've played uh, copyright free music this entire time, so it should not be muted. I will also pull the stream off and put it onto uh, YouTube, um, but I, I keep that I keep them unlisted. So if you want the link and this uh, does expire sometime soon, um, I I can send you the link. Um, no, it was game number one, Speedy. It was game number one. I remember this very clearly. Um, and yeah thank you shinigami for sending me your tournament links so for the next tournament i mean for the next self cup or theme um i will be doing a team building stream as per usual as soon as possible and then uh if anybody has completed an early uh practice uh draft or, or any type of uh tournament following that theme uh and you want it recapped like today um please let me know send me a message uh there's always a shortage of these because apparently i'm very scary which is why um actually part of the reason why i'm being slightly nicer today is because i'm sick and i can't yell or or be too angry and the second thing is um i'm trying to be a little nicer uh nowadays uh but yeah, apart from that, thank you everyone for hanging out. Uh, thank you Mel for uh, and King of Charmanders for sticking here the entire time. Uh, I know Francis and uh, Freaky Bot been here as well. Alexito, thank you for the sub earlier. Um, yeah, if nobody has any more questions within like the next literally 20 seconds, I'm gonna go ahead and raid someone. Um, and you can, you can all help me pick. Kappa. Looks like everybody's doing Little Cup GBL. Little Cup GBL. Little Cup GBL. Oh my god, so much Little Cup GBL. This is making me... You know what? Sadness. Nobody. Nobody does self anymore except me and... Um, what's his face? Uh, season 1 self European champion... Um, Ta Raging Taz. So, oh yeah, Raging Taz. Shout out Raging Raging Taz. Um, he he's one of the few remaining streamers who um, does uh, uh, self content, and he wants to continue to. Let's, let me see if that's correct. Yes, that is that is correct. Uh, he is one of the few remaining streamers who continues to make self content. Um, and he, he still tries to push that stuff, and I am totally for that. I love self. I just can't, like, it, it's just not for me anymore, so I'm coaching it now, as I did today. But apart from that, thank you everyone for hanging out. Uh, I'm going to send you all the Jimma Banks. Um, another fellow Canadian, he is on, I am on the western coast. He is on the eastern central side. He is from Toronto. Um, and... He's a really fun guy to hang around at. So go give him a follow. Go hang out with him for a little bit. And yeah. 
Thank you, DeFi for hanging out as well. Speedius, you, me, Taz should team up for a self stream. Let's talk soon. Yeah, Raging Taz messaged me, so if I'm available, we can make it work. You want me to stream it? Send it? I did my sets already? Wait, what are you talking about, Freaky Bot? Just DM me. Oh, you're talking to him. Never mind. Bye. <laughs>